Hey everyone, Chris Bennett here again, your blockchain beard guy. Uh, here to talk to you guys some more about blockchain and the exciting stuff that's happening. Today I want to pick up where we left off last time. And if you didn't get to see that, it's real easy. Just go click the blockchain beard guy hashtag in the description. You can see all the videos, catch up. And as always, if you have any questions or anything doesn't make sense, uh, feel free to reach out, connect with me and ask. Um, so today I want to talk about uh, continuing what we touched on last time, uh, proof of work group consensus and the talk and experiment to move into proof of stake, what the difference is, what they mean, um, and uh, what it could mean long term for blockchain and uh, platforms like Ethereum. So. Proof of work has worked really good so far, but we're starting to bump up against some of the limitations it has um, because all of these computers, all these nodes, all of us sitting in the stadium have to do this enormous guessing game every time we want to add a new block of transactions onto the chain. It's expensive, it takes up a lot of electricity, um, there are a lot of environmental concerns because a lot of the electricity that's being consumed for this work uh, isn't coming from green sources, it's coming from coal and petroleum. Um, and most importantly, one of the fundamental ideas behind blockchain is this idea of decentralization, this idea that uh, it, power and control should not be centralized in the hands of a few, uh, but should be democratized and anybody should be able to participate on blockchain. Um, the problem with proof of work is that most mining activities takes place takes place right now um, in, in about a dozen or so giant mining facilities across the world. And that's not really the, the vision that I think Satoshi had and the blockchain community has. Um, the blockchain community is, is much more of the philosophy that everybody should be able to run a node at home and help validate transactions and they should be able to do this with a common hardware, maybe an old laptop that they have just gathering dust. Um, and that way it, it makes it more trustable um, because everybody or, or most everybody can participate and they can get rewarded for doing so. Um, so that's a big concern is that proof of work is becoming a very centralized process in a decentralized architecture. Uh, the other big concern is that proof of work is kind of slow because there's a lot of work that has to be done every time we want to add a new block onto the chain. Um, to give you an example, the Ethereum network right now is between 10 and 15 transactions a second. That's what it can process. Uh, Visa has a payment processing network that can process 17,000 transactions a second. Um, now there are a lot of interesting ideas to attack this and not all of them involve a, a different group consensus mechanism, um, but one of the ideas that's being talked about a lot is proof of stake. And if you understood proof of work from the last video, uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble understanding proof of stake. And I'll give you guys another analogy. Let's pretend that we're all hanging out in the casino and we see that they've set up a new table and uh, it's a brand new game. It's never been played in any casino, so we decide to go check it out. And we're all a bunch of high rollers in the casino, so all of us uh, have at least $25,000 in chips right in our pockets. Uh, it's a good night for us. And we walk up to the table and uh, we, we ask the dealer, what's the game? He says, the game's called Honesty and here's how it works. Sit down at the table and you have to stake at least $25,000. You have to put that many chips on the table. Now, if you're honest, every round you win $25. Not a lot of money, but there's no downside. As long as you're honest, you win $25 every hand. And as long as you're honest, at the end of the night, you can take your stake and all your winnings and go enjoy yourself. So we decide to play, and it's a great game, and we have a lot of fun. Uh, but then someone decides to cheat, and we find out another rule about the game of honesty, and that is if you get caught cheating, you not only lose any of your winnings, you lose your entire $25,000 stake. So every hand is a choice between a small but promising reward that's continual or 
potentially losing a, a huge investment because you've tried to be dishonest and game the system. Um, proof of stake is essentially this game of honesty. And we're already seeing proof of stake being implemented and tested. In the Ethereum space, there's a release called Casper that's already running on the test net um, that is doing partial validation through proof of stake. And one of the reasons I'm really a fan of Ethereum uh, is because I think they have the most realistic and the most long-term vision in the space. I think they're actively addressing, identifying and addressing all the issues that will prevent uh, big business from getting into blockchain. And this is one of them. And so they're very cautious about testing proof of stake and also not making it a hard fork or a hard transition, uh, but slowly transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, so watch for that as 2018 goes on, uh, proof of stake being rolled out more and more. Look for those transaction times to go up and uh, it's going to be an exciting year in the space. As always, if you guys have any questions, uh, connect with me, shoot me a message, leave something in the comments. I love talking with you guys, uh, learning about how I can help. And as always, I'm here for you. Chris Bennett, your blockchain beard guy.